So this might seem like a weird video to be making on YouTube in particular, where there seems to be tons of us trans guys, especially white trans guys who make content very similar to each other. And a lot of people's individual experiences in the world, in the media they're exposed to, in their own filter bubbles, will disagree with whether there's more representation of trans guys or trans girls, or maybe they see mostly non-binary people. I mean, that would actually be a pretty cool experience. But even though it is beginning to change, the mainstream media and general consciousness has historically shown far more trans women than trans men. So much so that a bunch of us trans masculine people growing up didn't even know that trans men existed. We knew about trans women, sure, but not about trans men. So my question today is just, what's up with that? Hi, I'm Jackson Bird, and today I want to talk a little bit about how and why trans men have historically been more in the shadows than trans women, how that affects both of our lives, and why it matters. Or doesn't. But before we dive in too deep, let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. So one reason that I love Dollar Shave Club is last year they put out a video showcasing people of all types, genders, races, sexualities, body types, using their products. That's the kind of values that they're really dedicated to, and it's nice to see from a company, you know, like theirs right now. That's all I'm gonna say about that though, let's talk about their products. So no matter your routine, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. And they are really good at the smell part. They've got shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes, and of course, shaving products. Basically, if you've got a body, they've got you covered. And they automatically keep you stocked up so you don't run out. And you can choose your delivery frequency so you can get what you need however often you need it. And as someone who always stocks up on household and hygiene items in bulk because I hate running out, this model is a godsend. And the best part is the more you buy, the more you save. They call it their handsome discount. And right now, they have a great offer where you can get their shave, shower, or oral starter set for five bucks each. Now, I have all three of their starter sets here, which they so kindly sent me. The shave starter set comes with the executive razor and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver's shave butter, perfect size for travel. And you all know, I'm a big fan of this transparent shave butter. I'm not ashamed of liking to take care of my skin and nothing leaves my skin feeling healthier and smoother after shaving than this stuff. The oral starter set comes with a weighty toothbrush in this kind of ergonomic style and a trial size version of their toothpaste. And the brush even comes with a little case, which my germaphobic self super appreciates. And the shower starter set comes with three trial size versions of their amber lavender body cleanser, citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleanser, and sage and black pepper shampoo, which all smell amazing. Now I've said it before, but I was a Dollar Shave Club customer and fan long before they started sponsoring my videos, so you can trust that I am being absolutely enthusiastic and genuine with my recommendations here. And if you want to join the club with one of their starter sets, you can do that for just $5. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular price. You can get this exclusive deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird today. Again, that is dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird. And of course, all your links are gonna be down in the description box. All right, so back to trans guys and visibility. First off, I am one person, and while most of what I'm gonna say actually does come from the research and writing of trans women, it also comes from my lived experiences and with a huge bias of being a trans guy myself. And I'm speaking from a very American perspective here, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt and use it as a jumping off point for you to further your learning and come to your own conclusions. Cool? Now, like I said, the visibility of trans guys is increasing and your own experiences may vary, but the fact remains that when you search the word transgender online, the overwhelming majority of photos, videos, and articles are of trans feminine people. The majority of trans characters we see in film and TV shows are women. The majority of trans politicians and public figures are women. And as cool as it is that I can even list trans people in those professions now, visibility is not all good. And we will get to that. But first, let's just talk about why trans women are so much more visible than trans men. Most people chalk it up to a handful of reasons. A big one is the matter of passing, as being read by society as a certain gender according to society's stereotypes, regardless of how you actually identify. Again, this is a big generalization, but in general, it can be easier for trans masculine people to pass in society as men 
than for trans feminine people to pass in society as women. Depending, of course, on who you are and what your transition journey looks like. And this is partially because testosterone is a hell of a drug, and it can give trans masculine people a lot of changes all on its own, nothing else required. Meanwhile, some trans feminine people have to fight against those testosterone-fueled changes from puberty 1.0 with a cocktail of drugs in their hormone replacement therapy, and maybe even other medical procedures like facial feminization or tracheal shaving, of which there aren't even trans masculine equivalents. And even without hormones, which is extra important to keep in mind when we think back to trans people before the mid-20th century, even without hormones, some female assigned at birth people find it easier to pass in society as substantially younger men then male assigned at birth people find it to pass as women in society. Again, not across the board, but fairly true relative to each other. And all of that aside, Western society is much more willing to accept what they might see as a masculine woman than a feminine man. But why does it matter what society thinks and how well people pass? Because if you can pass, if you can live stealth, it's really tempting to do so. If for no other reason than for life to be a little bit safer. So what's happened over the generations is that trans men tended to live of stealth more often than trans women disappearing into mainstream society. And what I see happen today is trans men being very vocal and involved in the community, in support groups and activist movements, sharing their stories online, all when they're towards the beginning of their transition. And then they start dropping off. You know, when it isn't dominating their minds anymore, when they can go about life and not be misgendered, when they can live whatever to them feels like a normal life. They don't need the community as much as they used to. Trans feminine folks, on the other hand, and again, this is super generalizing, whether it's because of passing reasons or just how society treats trans women not well, the pattern seems to be that they stay involved with the community longer, maybe out of a need for those resources, for that support from each other, for keeping up the fight for rights and dignity, both of which are easier to come by as trans guys with newly found male privilege. I mean, especially those of us who are white, able-bodied, not visibly queer, and reasonably financially secure. We don't need the community as much, so a lot of us leave it. And while there is something to be said for using your privilege and security to fight in solidarity with your trans siblings, I can't completely blame trans guys who want to be totally stealth. I mean, I feel that desire in myself very often. Because we've seen what the visibility has done to trans women. They're plagued by stereotypes, ridicule, and violence. Trans homicide rates are staggering, and the majority of the victims are trans women of color. Of course, while an uptick in visibility of trans men does frighten me, I mean, I worry about the day that the general public's knowledge of trans men is great enough that the scars on my chest immediately out me as trans. But even then, I know that it will never be as bad for us, and that's because of what I believe is another cause of trans women being more visible and that is that we live in a super misogynistic society that sexualizes femininity, that quakes when masculinity is threatened, and that totally gets why a woman would want to be a man, but my god, why would a man ever want to give up his privilege and demean himself to the level of a woman? It's but it's true. Here's an excerpt from Julia Serrano's amazing book, Whipping Girl. Indeed, the media tends not to notice or to outright ignore trans men because they are unable to sensationalize them the way they do trans women without bringing masculinity itself into question. And since most people cannot fathom why someone would give up male privilege and power in order to become a relatively disempowered female, they assume that trans women transition primarily as a way of obtaining the one type of power that women are perceived to have in our society the ability to express femininity and to attract men. It's all BS. And this blend of trans misogyny and fetishization means that salacious, usually wildly inaccurate and dehumanizing stories about trans women have always dominated the tabloids. I mean, look at this. XGI becomes blonde beauty. Christine Jorgensen was all over the newspapers in the 1950s following her transition and the public's fascination hasn't stopped since then. Meanwhile, this book is filled with stories of trans men at the turn of the century who also made headlines, not all of which were positive, but most of the articles about them talked about how they were upstanding men of their community. And then those men faded back into anonymity. I mean, so much so that the whole premise of this book was that only recent technology has enabled the author to uncover the newspaper clippings about these men because they were just so obscure and overlooked. Trans men just don't entice the public in the same way. And of course, in fictionalized media, while trans men may be largely absent, trans women are nearly always presented as the butt of the joke or as someone trying to 
to trick men as fake, as deranged, as evil. And all of these representations is what educates society and therefore leads to the dangerous world trans women have to live in. So I mean, in that regard, I'm kind of cool with the fact that trans guys aren't as visible if that's what we have to look forward to with more visibility. Though again, male privilege and society's obsession with sexualizing femininity means it probably wouldn't be as bad for us. But this is also why I'm grateful that trans women do dominate some trans spaces, whether in IRL support groups, activist movements, online platforms, or even the number of public figures out there, because their voices, their real voices from the source, need to be heard. Yes, we trans men have needs and challenges as well. We deserve a seat at some of the tables, but we're not being ridiculed or murdered on nearly the level that trans women are. Now, I will offer one other dynamic at play here, which is some trans guys' self-defeating reasons for lacking visibility. I think there are a lot of trans men like me out there who are very quick and willing to put trans women to the front and say their voices need to be heard more than mine. Because... I was socialized female, I lived in the world as a woman, I know what it's like for my voice to be discounted. Having now gained male privilege, I'm almost more mad at its existence and double standards than I was then. I mean, trans people are really unique in that many of us get to see both sides of male privilege. But nothing frustrates me more than when people only want to hear about this unique perspective from trans men. It's like, yeah, we've got some things to say, sure, but you do realize what you're doing, right? You're only believing the evidence of male privilege when men are talking to you about it. Ask a trans woman. Many of them have experienced both sides as well, and they are currently lacking in that privilege. Ugh. The irony. And a further complication for those of us trans guys who were socialized as female, especially in places with strict gender roles like I was, is that we were taught to be quiet, be obedient, don't rock the boat, listen to others, not really given much reason to be confident in our own opinions. So you combine those ingrained tendencies with a hyper-awareness of our own male privilege, and yeah, we're gonna shut up when trans women are in the room. We're gonna make sure they're being heard instead of us. And so it makes sense that a pattern could emerge over time where trans men are either working behind the scenes or leaving the scenes altogether. And again, I'm kind of okay with this, but I am glad it's beginning to change a little bit because I remember what it was like back in the 90s when there really was a lack of trans male visibility. I mean, I was hella confused growing up as a girl who felt I should have been a boy. I had like some exposure to drag queens and all of the damaging representations of trans women that I mentioned earlier, but like not really anything at all about trans men. I really didn't think there were other people out there who felt the way that I did. And I have heard the exact same thing from a lot of other trans guys, especially ones my age and older. It's so important for young trans guys to know there are other people like them in the world and that there are solutions to their suffering. And it's also important for other people to know trans men exist, for parents and teachers to know what might be going on with a gender non-conforming kid, for medical professionals to know how to treat us with experience and dignity, for everyday people to just like not be shocked by our existence or to think that we're coming out as a woman to them when we disclose our trans status. Now, all those things like might sound funny to you as someone who is well aware of our or your own existence as a transmasculine person, but you would be surprised how much that kind of thing still happens. So ultimately, I do think the direction we're going in is a positive one. But I think it's important to always look back at how we got here and contextualize why things are the way that they are so that we don't ever discount the privileges we have now and the hard work that was done by generations before us. This is a larger topic for another time, but there are so many petty yet volatile arguments happening in certain parts of the community these days that like would just kind of be moot points if those folks took the time to understand the history of our movement and of gender and sexuality in general. But that's a video for another time. And if you'd like to see it eventually, you can subscribe to this channel uh, and also consider supporting me on Patreon, which helps me continue to make thoughtful content like this. And if you want a usually more lighthearted look at my life, you can follow me at Jack is not a bird on Twitter and Instagram. And once again, thank you so much to today's sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Don't forget that you can get that $5 offer for one of these starter sets at the link in the description box, dollarshaveclub.com slash Jackson Bird. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic in the comments, so let's get some respectful and curious conversations happening down there. And if you made it this far, I truly do thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.